Danielle came to me and said she had an idea as an ally for the LGBT community of bringing, uh, talking about the labels, about LGBT, about what it means. Because a lot of times our straight allies don't understand and say, you know what? How do I approach someone in the LGBT community and have a conversation with them? I'm scared. I don't want to say the wrong thing and seem like I'm homophobic. And this was a great way of having people share their own narratives so that they could feel comfortable. Other people can say, oh, I get it a little bit more. Well, I think one of the interesting things about you, Karama, which people we didn't get to touch on at the beginning of the show, is you have a heavy hand in social work. Yes. So this is kind of something that plays into one of your strong suits, one of your strong legs. Yeah, I actually had a moment when we walked back in there. I was like, am I going back to work? Did I? Did Queer Eye fire me? Am I? Because <laughs> I, I used to work at the Los Angeles LGBT Center, but it's always oh, wow. great to, you know, to spend moments at that because those are safe environments, not just mm -hmm. for LGBTQI youth, but also for seniors and for adults. I think one of the things when people need to learn about the LGBTQI community is, first of all, how to approach us. And so I want to start off with um, what we know as PGP, which is your preferred gender pronoun, and also how you identify. So I think this is a great way to, for people to learn what that means. So could you tell me your PGP and how you identify? Sure. So my PGPs are she, her, or they, them, um, and I identify as a queer female. Uh, mine is he, him, and I identify as gay. Uh, my PGPs are he, him, and I identify as a gay, queer male. My PGPs are her, she, um, that be, sometimes I like that. <laughs> 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 um, I'm trans, I'm a transgender female. Awesome. Mm -hmm. But if I'm meeting you guys for the first time, what's the, what's the best way to go about asking um, what are your pronouns or how should I identify you? I think one of the things that I've noticed, especially within a lot of the community outreach work that I do, is to simply ask in a genuine manner. I mean, I think we get so caught up in how we should identify folks um, yeah. that just asking from a genuine space and saying, like you said, you know, well, how should I identify you? What do you prefer? Um, and then making sure that you stick to that and not disrespecting that person by calling them something else, I think is typically kind of the fail safe. What's really beautiful about all four of you is that you're visible. Mm -hmm. You know, why was it important for you all to be visible? So one of the things I do here for the center is I go to Fortune 500 companies in the workplace and really help people, one, be allies, and two, come out. And so, you know, it's so important from a business perspective, but also a personal perspective, because if you are not wholly out, then what else are you not being honest about with yourself? What else are you hiding? What else are you not bringing to the table? And so I think visibility is so important with that, because then we can all kind of bring our whole selves to whatever we're putting ourselves into. When you talk about visibility, then there's obviously a cloak of invisibility. Um, do you feel like there's a sector of the world that is the most invisible or like a certain group of people that you feel like? I do. I actually do all the time, uh, especially, you know, if I go to like a gay club outside of like Chicago where I know everybody, um, I'm considered very straight acting. So like people won't even know. like come up yeah. and like speak to me. You know, they see the tattoos and just I'm not that flamboyant. I'd like to consider myself an ally. And I came here you wanting. Are. Thank you. <laughs> you are. I came here wanting to um, sort of like take away, not rules, but sort of like key phrases or things that people could use to um, to ask most, the most respectful questions. And I think what I've taken away f after learning from all of you is that there really aren't any rules. That it's just about coming from a place of love. And so thank you for being so open. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, guys, for having us. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yes. It was a great afternoon. It was a really extraordinary afternoon. I think so many people can learn from this type of conversation. The main thing, as you said in the, the piece, is just be open. You know, sometimes if you lead with respect and say, hey, I just am curious, I want to learn, people understand that you come from a place of love. Yeah, and I do feel like, you know, we've had the conversation earlier this week about racial bias and Starbucks. I, I think it goes to any topic, especially one like this is dialogue, goes a long way in the feeling like it's a safe zone in a lot of places, not just in that interview setting, but everywhere to have these kind of dialogues I think goes a long way, because to me as a straight man, it's, it's heartbreaking to see that people can't live their own life out of fear of safety or being alienated, and that's something I wouldn't wish upon anybody.